Welcome everyone to What the Force and welcome to a quick episode, maybe quick, maybe not. We'll see how much we get talking <laughs> on Resistance, a little bit of a recap of season one and a kickoff for season two and definitely why you should check it out. And with me to talk about it is my good friend, Hammy. Welcome, Hammy. Hi. <laughs> Hi. This is such a cool show. I love it so much it's I've been looking forward to it actually I had watched it before my family got a chance to last night when you know we actually had a chance to all sit down I had watched it as soon as it was on at 10 p.m because you know that's when it was showing yeah it's such a strange air time <laughs> yeah exactly and uh, so I had watched it like without the kids and then my husband was like you watch this without us and I'm like, you know, I watched it at Celebration, like, in April, <laughs> this particular episode, at least. But I'm really, really happy that Resistance is back. And this episode has a little bit of a goal of to tell you why Resistance is important, if you hadn't checked it out, why you should definitely check it out. Some things that Hammy and I have noticed about the show in particular a general discussion as well as kind of a kickoff to season two and what we think we're heading into maybe from a storytelling and theme perspective so fun yay <laughs> yeah so um hammy first before we start i wanted to say thank you for hosting the resistance viewing group <laughs> There was kind of a launch off from the Clone Wars group that I helped start and then abandoned because I was really busy last year. No, it was great. Yeah, Resistance. You ended up uh, like basically organizing a group that would watch Resistance all together. Yeah, um, and I'm sure they're listening to this episode. So hi, everyone from our <laughs> Resistance group. Um, but yeah, uh, when season one of Resistance started, um, I would stream the episodes on rabbit and a group of us star wars fans would watch the episodes together and chat and it was just awesome it was really cool so we so we got through the whole first then and now for the second season sadly rabbit doesn't work anymore yeah. so, so we're we're all commenting about the episode instead of getting to watch it together so. yes and luckily the first episode was available on youtube for those that maybe had to wait or figure it out some other way so that that's kind of nice that they provided that on YouTube. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what are your general thoughts about Resistance? Well, since I love the sequel trilogy, I was just so excited to have an animated show that was set during that time period. But I didn't expect to fall in love with Resistance the way I have. It's just mm -hmm. such an endearing show. It's each of, all, each of the characters is so unique and they're so happy. And I guess part of it... Um, I mean, it kind of makes sense with the setting because unlike Rebels and unlike Clone Wars, there's the war hasn't even started yet. So we got to meet all mm. of the characters first, get to know them, and then all of the seeds were laid for now we're getting to the war. And so everyone's loyalties are going to be tested. It's just really cool to like have that time with normal people in the in like the galaxy and then it all goes <laughs> crazy yeah <laughs> when it, was, and Prime <laughs> it was really interesting to see this very pre-war theme and um one thing that I took in school was actually the lead up to world war one and how much almost like an entire generation of young adults were incredibly anxious for like action and adventure and that sort of feeling of things being too stable but yet also like a feeling of foreboding in the background was very poignant throughout the whole first season leading up to kind of the events of the end of the first season one thing I did want to call out and it's not really a criticism because I kind of now with hindsight and some thinking about it understand what they were trying to do with the marketing but the lead into the marketing for resistance was all about the aces and we have like had less than a full episode of time with all of them to combined. Yeah, <laughs> you it's know, really misleading. And and honestly, it kind of um, put off people who probably enjoyed the more force and um, spiritual 
aspects of Clone Wars and Rebels. So it, yeah. it even for I know that's what you, that's what you're into. That's what I'm into. So going into Resistance, I was more just watching it because it's sequel trilogy content, and I wasn't expecting you know oh all the political intrigue that is actually at the heart yeah. of the show. Whereas I thought it was going to be a lot more racing, which I don't mind the racing. It's really it's animated beautifully and it's awesome. But um, but that's but definitely. But it was an odd choice to like mm-hmm. get people to be invested in the you know storyline, which was politics. Um, you know, like it, Castellon and the Colossus was very much like almost this Casablanca type location. You exactly. know, like totally in the middle, <laughs> right in the middle, and like kind of everybody came, everybody went, but they obeyed the rules of Captain Doza, and. Like that feel like there's the cool cantina, you know, there's the there's the club that only the cool people can hang out in. There's the repair shops. There's the, you know, the scrapyard, you know, like mm-hmm. there's exactly. the dude selling gorgs, which you can eat. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but like like it was in it, it's its entire ecosystem where people are going in and going out and you know now that we have Batu it also feels a lot like Batu um it's got like the its own you know its own politics within the place it's got the external politics that are invading it's got different players all of that and none of that was in the lead up marketing no at I, all yeah, that's that's such a be- cuz Casablanca is one of my favorite movies of yeah. all time. <laughs> But it's one of mine too. That's such a that's such a beautiful comparison because you really do have all those different factions as well. It's not just the actual setting and the locations that you're in this one place and one time and you know where you're heading, right? Like in mm-hmm. Casablanca, you know, um, you know where you're heading. You're heading this- towards the extreme part of the war where mm-hmm. you and- know a lot of things are happening yeah and, and the same thing with season one we kind of knew we were heading towards hosni mm-hmm. blowing up so it's it, that whole co- that compare that's what a beautiful comparison mc <laughs> but even even the factions too not just the setting but the factions yeah. and the different groups coming together um you know within you have like you know the the underworld and the criminals as well in casablanca right who are mm-hmm. with and then you have you know the army and the soldiers and all that yeah, yeah it's great it's great so yeah, yeah and the people that are right. trying to just go on their way through it, yeah. right? Yeah, you have civilians. Yeah, you have civilians who are just kind of caught up with um, the Colossus as well, right? Every yeah. there's, um, you know, there are just people who are just happen to be living on the Colossus and have no idea all this other stuff is happening around them. So it, and I think at the beginning of season one as well, they don't know. Um, I think um, Yeager tells Kaz, "Oh, the average person doesn't even know who the Resistance is." Yeah. Um, he says that and it's the same thing kind of with the first order they view Mm -hmm. um like most people don't know who you know who the first order is yeah Yeah. they're just going on living their lives and you know there are some people that are in the know who are craving adventure and like that's very much what Kaz experiences is this like call to adventure like he has kind of always gotten things given to him because of his dad and his like social standing in life and I always felt like that was a really interesting play is to show somebody who in some ways was very much like Leia. Mm-hmm. Like like there's a Leia parallel there, but he's um Leia has always had a drive to prove herself on her own. I don't know that Kaz necessarily had that drive until thrust into adventure. Right. Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah. No, the, the comparison is definitely there um, with both of their um, Kaz definitely coming from privilege, and yeah. and it becomes up later as well when it when it's re- when you know Tam finds out that he's a rich yeah. kid and <laughs> and this whole time and you know he's not he hasn't been you know um, poor until he got to <laughs> the Colossus. So yeah, exactly. And like Tam, it, it's uh, her story is just so interesting. So. Um, Kaz is given the opportunity to basically join the resistance, become a spy on this platform, this fueling platform on the planet of Castellon called the Colossus. It's got a complicated um, political environment already. It has kind of this like sub culture around racing which is how he's going to fit in to the environment. And he does for a little while kind of just, you know, being a attempting to become a mechanic badly (laughs) and like figuring out the racing and then basically just kind of paying attention to what's going on around him which is you know who are the good guys who are the bad guys on this 
um, mission from Poe, and Poe is the one who has uh, kind of brought him into the resistance, etc. And as well as had the contact in Yeager, who is like his mentor on the platform himself, who has his own backstory, because everybody in this show has a complicated backstory wow <laughs> it's it's so deep like you were mentioning with the um the advertising for it i didn't get any of that from oh it's going to be you know the racing show where there's non-force users and i and i don't think they play enough how much each and every single character has their own story that they're coming and bringing into it so like mm-hmm. you mentioned yeager he was part of the rebellion he was at the battle of jakku we find all of this out he had a family they were on Batu. Yeah his family you know whatever i don't want to go too much into spoilers i I don't know but you find out all of this stuff and it kind of just adds layers to his character and then also the fact that he's reluctant now because he's seen all of this before with the empire and similarly i think uh, i guess a foil to him would be doza we haven't seen it all come to fruition but doza would be his foil and that he's a former imperial we find that out and i think um in this first episode he kind of says that he didn't want for his daughter to have to experience what he went through with the empire but yeah. now it's all it it's all the galaxy never learns and it's coming back around again it's so it's so good it's such a good show <laughs> yeah so to yeah see, to see those older characters and then now this younger generation is on the verge of having to deal with that same kind of situation war is just so cool it's just and this younger generation has never seen wartime it's very much like a microcosm of the larger themes of the sequel trilogy which is the older generation um and the inheritance that they're giving the younger generation of the problems of the past and how only kind of everybody working through it together can they actually get through it it's just it's really really interesting to see like a show that is telling a similar story but with different characters and different situations still dealing with the same and, themes and kind of as the audience we're kind of given a behind the scenes because our characters themselves don't know all of this about each other but yeah. we know so as the audience we're it's like getting to see the, the background of everyone from the sequel trilogy but like with these new characters so yeah so the characters themselves are put into these situations and we can kind of see that it's about to happen that a about to happen you know we can kind of predict that things are going to fall into place a certain mm-hmm. way and the characters them and so it also kind of parallels yourself in real life because you're the same thing you can see how those choices are made how you without all full knowledge of what the generation before you has gone through how you yeah. would make a decision and fall or <laughs> turn yeah. when those aren't the values that you have at your court at all Yeah, yeah. And, and like how, you know, not being honest about our heritage, our history is means that uh, we're doomed to repeat it, you know, like not learning from the mistakes of the past. Uh, That's philosopher Santayana, he would say, you know, those that don't study history are doomed to repeat it. Like ignoring the past and not learning from it means that we're going to fall into the same traps again just like Doza says in the beginning of this next season. And one thing that like is really kind of interesting about Resistance, and we just found this out during the summer, is that they purposely chose to only make it two seasons long. So right after The Rise of Skywalker, maybe even before we get the (laughs) Blu-ray out, DVD Blu-ray from The Rise of Skywalker, the show will be done yeah yeah and it's 19 episodes so that will probably put us to february um if they're doing an episode a week if they'll right. probably take a break christmas week and thanksgiving week but yeah it'll be february by the time so the just show in time for clone wars to start up on disney plus yeah <laughs> yeah and but they're kind of telling Tane's story and so that kind of also um is the benefit too because everything is a lot tighter um everything that happens in an episode you know one or two episodes later is going to pay off um so it just feels like a much tighter story and they know what they're trying to say and where they're trying to go with each character at least it feels that way to me yeah i very much feel like they had it all mapped out from the beginning it was going to be two seasons it was going to say these things so what do you think that they're trying to say with this show (laughs) 
based on the fact that it's only two seasons, right? Right, right. <laughs> and they're kind of using it as, I assume, prep for The Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, prep for The Rise of Skywalker, telling the same story, but like the animation and the and the the stories for kids, especially like the books and like the junior novelizations, things like that, are trying to prep kids for the themes of Star Wars almost like boiled down. And so like we'll we'll get to this. We're gonna do a Rebels episode together uh upcoming. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's really just trying to tell us that story in a different way and in a different angle, you know? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um I've mentioned it to you before too, but um with Clone Wars and with Rebels, that's exactly why I fell in love with animation and why I'm I'm pushing resistance so hard on being like, you need to watch this show. Because it um it really adds to the story, but it also um helps you process what's happening in the as well. Um, mm-hmm. you know, you say it all the time, Star Wars is iterative story. Yes. It really is with <laughs> the animation department because you see these themes repeated and then the situations are different the characters are different and like you mentioned the outcome might be different in some cases so yeah it's like they do the structure like again or they've done it before like in rebels there's tons of examples where they've shown um a structurally similar story where there's like you know conflict uh you know a temptation a rise and a fall and then it's repeated in like another show or a book or a you know into the sequel trilogy itself (laughs) we actually see some large parallels and part of that you know like the sky talkers will say the look to the animation department for the future of star wars and i agree with them in that that is what it is they're trying to tell you the story repeatedly so that you get what the point is but also so that you can show hey you know this try didn't work out that way so maybe we'll try it this way you know (laughs) and hope for a better outcome a different yeah yeah and you'll see you'll see different characters go through very similar structurally similar stories and even from clone wars to clone wars to rebels to resistance to the original trilogy to the comics and you'll see the outcomes be different because that is the iterative storytelling of star wars that is ring theory which i've covered in previous episodes Um, or I will be covering actually in an upcoming episode if this comes out beforehand, (laughs) but it is the way that Star Wars works. It is Star Wars that rhymes, which is fun. So (laughs) what is resistance telling us? (laughs) Well, I think a big part of it, um, we kind of mentioned already, but Mm -hmm. how these little things in the story are built up to a point that the characters are forced to make decisions and that they wouldn't otherwise make or that they don't have the full picture of what's going on. It's just really cool to see all layers of loyalties and trust and Mm -hmm. betrayal, uh, things that happen to certain characters. And then the outcome is you end up siding with the bad guys or siding with the good because of that. And Mm -hmm. you don't know how you're so far gone that you don't know how you ended up there. (laughs) I'm not to spoilers (laughs) spoilers away, yeah no i i think that it's what it does really well is that um you know says says that obi-wan kenobi line like many of the truths we cling to depend very much on our own point of view right because betrayal is such a huge factor that comes into into this storytelling like if kaz had been betrayed by yeager if yeager had actually been a bad guy can you imagine him maybe choosing a different side or going against the resistance it's entirely possible Mm -hmm. like him making a different choice if Yeager had actually not been a good person and had actually turned out to be the spy right or even not even just going that far if um Yeager had continued to say that he didn't want to be involved to say hey um good guys bad guys (laughs) yeah yeah like very (laughs) DJ yeah (laughs) Good guys, bad guys. Yeah, like if he had turned out to be more of a DJ type person from The Last Jedi. Um, It's just, it's really interesting. It's like who we put our faith in. And 
I believe that Tam and Kaz get very close throughout the season and there is you know some outcomes to that relationship and it's not necessarily the fact that it was one particular instance it was that their entire relationship was built on a house of cards that collapsed right that was definitely what it was Um, it it wasn't just one instance no no it was building through that the whole season until the very end and we could you had mentioned the dread you could feel the dread in those final three episodes it was not just you know the galaxy wide dread of okay Hosni and Prime Mm -hmm. we're getting closer each episode to Hosni and Prime but it was also you could see the tightening of the relationships to where the tension was getting tighter and tighter to it had to you know come out and I was I kept wondering um if they were gonna go that far if they were gonna do it I I really thought I was like okay maybe Kaz lets everyone know that he's like maybe I just was expecting the happy ending but we're not done with this show yet right yeah yeah the happy end of the first season so yeah and I'm glad that they went there it it totally made sense to me for them to go there and I was like really happy that they that they did that so (laughs) one character that I'm I'm just obsessed with is Niku and he is like this pure spot of joy in every episode like I just absolutely love what they've done with his character Sonara who is a character that is kind of comes in about a third of the way into the show her introduction was really amazing as well. Her conflict, her story, her background, all of that. Um, the themes of unlikely bedfellows, everybody kind of working together, even though they don't necessarily want to. Like that all plays out by the end of the first season. And we have almost like a new board by the end of the end of the first season leading into the second season, which is no, awesome. it's, it's It's really cool because I think um, speaking with, parallels like I wonder if that's how we might open with episode nine that people who otherwise wouldn't have been allies might ally next again you know with each other against the first order it might be something that we see in the rise of Skywalker where you know former criminals and pirates are (laughs) I'm a smuggler (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) like but it's cool it's cool with even like a character like Sonara um you would never expect that she would endear you herself to you the way that she does in that short amount of time you're able to kind of see her whole side a little bit of her backstory um how she fell into the story and then also there's a part where Kaz um he says he helps Sonara you know when he maybe shouldn't have helped her um Mm -hmm. and he says and she's surprised and shocked and taken aback that he would even help her after knowing about her backstory Mm -hmm. and he says you're a good person that's why I know you're a good person and it's just so beautiful (laughs) it's so so, good yeah it's so good there's like all these moments in resistance where you you can't just help but love each and every single one of the characters it's it's really good and they definitely play up that there is potentially something romantic going on between the two of them which is kind of cool too that they actually brought that into the story (laughs) well Kaz Kaz definitely has a (laughs) <laughs> yeah, she's yeah, a bit, yeah she's a bit oblivious but she might who knows in season it might pick back up <laughs> i mean yeah and like shippers are like oh yeah let's see this, see this play out uh but you know it's like love in a dangerous time who knows what's gonna happen mm-hmm. i i particularly loved um you know being able to see i, I know this is gonna sound so weird but we do end up seeing what ha- like the events of the force awakens from a new angle in in this particularly from kaz's perspective and it adds so much to the story that now when i watch the force awakens it feels like i have a different emotional weight because i now know characters that lost their home right right and that's like the iterative storytelling that i referred to i've talked i talked with um with Claudia Gray about this when I interviewed her about how seeing the destruction of Alderaan from different eyes in Lost Stars ended up having people be mad at her for blowing up Alderaan. (laughs) (laughs) Even though that happened decades before. (laughs) Yeah, because they actually got to see it through this first person perspective of the characters that were experiencing it. And it's Mm -hmm. that much harder to see you know, a person lose their home, you know, or 
see that see the horror of that event actually happen but the same thing applies it's like they don't downplay it they actually make it seem incredibly personal because they keep the camera very much on Kaz's reactions and it adds this layer of genuine character struggle that didn't exist before because when it happened in TFA we don't necessarily identify with any of the I don't know people that lost their lives or anything no it's we're very much on a different plot thread entirely and it's Mm -hmm a big event that it's happening whereas like in resistance when you see it happen it means so much more to you and to the characters and and similar to in lost stars where you kind of also saw the trauma and the after effects i anticipate Mm -hmm. that in season two it's not going to just be brushed aside with kaz um that it will very much like be part of his character now and he mentions it in the first episode a little bit um, but I hope that they'll go more into it about um, seeing his home destroyed and what that means and all of that. Yeah, like it seems like he's kind of referring all of his pain into the loss of Tam, which is yeah. kind of interesting. Oh, that's t- it's really, it's very true. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hope that... Um, I hope that we get to see kind of this like one of the things that has been built especially over the summer from a lead up to the rise of Skywalker perspective is how many different angles and avenues the resistance is trying to make a go out of it, go out of it and it definitely seems like this is just another play of that idea you know yeah. <laughs> like them trying to do a um Try, trying to get the clauses, trying to get the fueling station uh, is just another thing that they were trying to do to keep it safe, right? Whereas the First Order almost doesn't even care about it. <laughs> They're like, if we get it, we get it. If we don't, we just keep it away from the resistance because they don't. They're so powerful and so organized and they've been working at this for almost 30 years that it's just more about a game of keep away from this underfunded and under... Um, under I don't know (laughs) organized group of the resistance yeah definitely um it's kind of cool to see that there is no hierarchy kind of (laughs) resist among us um because we're 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 meeting Kaz and that's Mm -hmm. how we're thrown into getting to know the resistance it's just him and he's on a spy mission but then his actions and what he's spying for are so big. It's crazy to see like how one person can have, have such a big effect on the future of the galaxy and the future of the resistance. So it so even though they are like a ragtag bunch of, you know, trying to just against the might of the first order, it's cool to see, you know, that individual perspective from be, through Kaz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think we really see that as in the sequel trilogy because we are introduced to Poe already being part of the resistance. And mm-hmm. we kind of see it a little bit with Finn because he's now discovering that that's where his loyalties lie and that's what he's going to be a part of. So hopefully in episode nine, that insight into the resistance and what it's about it, um, is a little bit more fleshed out. Yeah, because it's almost just like, because we must, which is which is kind of interesting, right? <laughs> right? Like, well, what is the alternative? Let the First Order control everything? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I kind of get why, you know, and why what we're going to talk about next, because I do actually want to bring it up a little bit. So um, there's a character called Tam who um, has this journey and, you know, she faces some betrayal by especially the main character, Ta- Kaz, in like him not telling her the truth of his situation, lying to her pretty much from day one. Nothing about their relationship was actually real. And when faced with the opportunity to basically be given a cause, she takes it immediately from the First Order. They tell her the sweet words. They say, you know, we'll give you a purpose. We'll give you something to fight for. We're just trying to do the right thing, right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of wonder... um how much this story parallels Kylo Ren. We have to go there. <laughs> I think it's- so. I think it's telling us a mini Kylo Ren story. You're important. You're valuable. You know, we're doing what's right. Because like when you listen to um, interviews 
Adam Driver gives about Kylo Ren, he doesn't view that Kylo Ren would see what he is doing is wrong. He thinks he's justified in what he's doing. And so does Tam when she decides to kind of leave her friends and join the First Order to become a pilot because she is a talented pilot, but she's never been given the opportunity to really show who she is. And I think also because at her core, um, Tam is such a good person. Um, You see it throughout all of the episodes going um, through the first season, um, that friendship and loyalty and all of that thing that's important to her and core to who she is as a character. So when Kaz betrays that trust and loyalty, people who she thought were her family, when your family betrays you, what choice do you have? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And (laughs) And, And I actually just thought of something really, really interesting, which is that in Bloodline, when Leia and the truth of her heritage i.e that she is the daughter of darth vader comes out she leaves a message for ben solo (laughs) on his calm and never hears a reply yeah and i think um bloodline is so good but and she's always thinking about ben and she's hoping that luke is having a good conversation (laughs) with him about the reveal like, about the reader reveal. Yeah, paralleling the story that we get in the first episode of a season when, you know, Tam is now with the First Order and we have Kaz on the other side. He regrets what has happened and that he didn't have an opportunity to explain things himself. And he leaves her a message which she only hears the first part of. Yep. And and he's all and it he she is the constant in his mind as well because yeah. he's talking to Tora and then says Tam's name so you know that he's like that's all he's thinking about the same way Leia that's all she's thinking about it, mm-hmm. she's not really thinking about her own status in the galaxy or anything when all of that's more about Ben and how he's going to react and the same thing kind of is happening with Tam yeah and instead of say listening to the message she decides to put on the mask which <laughs> could also parallel (laughs) Ben Solo turning into Kylo Ren, right? Becoming something that is faceless uh, with a greater purpose, that she is fulfilling a role rather than um, an individual that has ties to their emotional past and wounds, right? Exactly. One of the biggest struggles um, that people can face is betrayal and it's something that um, is very hard for people to get over. And that is that is the wounds that Tam carries around with her and also Kylo Ren. <laughs> no, the, that's exactly what it is. Um, they're not being very subtle about it. I mean, at least to us, maybe maybe to Ben Solo fans, it's, it's not subtle at all. But it really feels like they're repeating that story for a purpose and for a reason. And it's to show how everything kind of builds up for those characters and leads them down this path that they wouldn't have otherwise gone down. Yeah, and in that way, I think that before the Rise of Skywalker, we're going to have moments of doubt or her saving her friends or choosing to make a different choice um, so that we show, hey, you know, maybe this isn't the right side for her or that, you know, she's been forced to do something that she wouldn't have otherwise done. You know, she might actually go dark and like have to make bad decisions and hurt some people that she previously cared about. Yeah, I definitely think um, that they will go there. I'm kind of also hoping we get a bad trigger moment with Tam. (laughs) (laughs) Not she does. She chooses to. Oh, oh, the uh, well, we've gotten it before too because we got like the the fin. uh, My blaster didn't go off. Yeah, there's a blaster mis- malfunction. You know, like that, that moment of doubt is actually very important. So something to do with her being in a ship that parallels Ben, where she cannot fire on the people that she cares about. Probably Yeager, mm-hmm. Yeager being the parental uh, surrogate for Tam. That'll probably be it. First prediction out the gate. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, no, I love it. <laughs> but yeah, so in general. Star Wars Resistance season one is incredibly complex. The animation is gorgeous. It seems to have gotten better over time. 
especially as they were able to add more, I don't know, light, dark variant. Uh, I talked about this previously in um, the animation episode that I did with Alex Leonis. So check that out if you're kind of looking about like what is the difference between this cell shaded 3D animation versus say the animation that we get in Rebels or the animation that we get in Clone Wars and kind of the history of Star Wars animation. That's a really good episode to check out and like look at it to say okay what was going on from an animation perspective a lot of people reacted oddly to this animation but it's almost like standard now for a lot of um cartoons you see it more and more this like yeah no uh, and it's beautiful theme. i i think it's yeah. really beautiful to see on screen um yeah and, and- I think people were doubting it in the beginning too when they first saw the trailer and the images I was, but then when you see it in motion and it, it's great it's really beautiful and I think a lot especially like sp- um, when you see the battle sequences in space um, mm-hmm. the contrast between the light and the dark it's just really cool to see the ships and um, explosions and all of that it's it's really cool yeah I think that especially with the ships and how like I don't know clean they look and Mm -hmm. and the animation itself they're they're also able to get um things to look dirty you know whereas with the 3d animation in rebels and in the clone wars it was really hard for them to make things look dirty everything had this almost like supernatural cleanness to it and it was just because to make things look dirty was very difficult uh from an animation perspective with that 3d style whereas with the cell shading flattening it is it allows them to create more uh value changes between the light and the dark and allow things to kind of get grubbier which is fun (laughs) yeah definitely especially on the colossus which (laughs) has lots of locations for that (laughs) Yeah, and they and they definitely have uh, you know, made his like noodle arms less noodly. So it's it's slowly almost with the animation changes, it's almost showing these kids are growing up as they're faced with more and more complex moral decision making that they have to do. Um, I think uh, other people have made this comparison as well with Clone Wars and Rebels, but I think that seems to be the pattern. And I, I actually, and after um, I thought about it, I was like, I really love that. But it the shows are meant to grow up with the kids watching it, right? So mm-hmm. then as you get to the later episodes and the later seasons, you know, between a six-year-old and a seven-year-old is actually pretty big. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> by the time that they're seven, they're, you know, experiencing the world differently. The characters have grown up with them. So it's really cool to see that also. Um, Kaz yeah. and all of our characters. And, and Kaz has to be a lot more serious and he can't just be kind of goofing around or wishing things would be different, etc. It's... It's nice Mm -hmm. to see. Okay, so what we're going to do kind of with season two is take some speculation, I guess, on what we're going to see and why it's going to be important towards, I don't know, how this is all going to play out for season two. (laughs) Um, I think that it's just really important to say, like, how does this tie into the larger story of Star Wars? Star Wars being one story, this is part telling almost like the behind the scenes of how difficult it is for the resistance, things that we might not otherwise learn. I also think as well, it's prepping kids for some of the concepts that they're going to see in the rise of Skywalker. That's the purpose of it is to tell us this behind the scenes story so that kids are mentally ready for what they're going to see in the rise of Skywalker. (laughs) Definitely agree Um, with that. So what do you think we are going to see, Hammy? Well, I, right away, I'm kind of hoping we see Dakar soon. Um, mm-hmm. So that would pick up um, Abandon Dakar. So right with The Last Jedi. Um, with So do you think the- it'll be exploded? Because it, it gets exploded just as they leave. Right, right. I think it will be. I, I mean, okay. I, I at least hope so, because we wouldn't want... We wouldn't want our resistance. We wouldn't want the resistance squad showing up during the explosion. So yeah, yeah. I think I think it will hopefully be afterwards and the remnants of the battle that took place. Um, and they'll probably be on the search for meeting up with the resistance. I'd love for um, not so that's the connection to Leia, right? Is um, mm-hmm. okay. They were on the car, but then I'd also really love a connection to Luke to also happen in season two. Um, either they find out what happened on crate, or I just want to see that wider galaxy at least a hint of what the galaxy maybe not for the movie but i would really love it if we could see it in the show somehow of how the 
galaxy is reacting to what happened on crate it's such a like short they time. hear they hear the word of it or something like that i would like mm-hmm. them to run into hondo and Aka. oh yeah <laughs> that'd be cool <laughs> because we know he's on batu and right we know that he is a character that is sympathetic to the resistance because of his own redemption arc with the rebels so long ago. Um, and, you know, he is an existing character that is, you know, at the Disney park. I'd like to actually yeah. see him animated in this form as well as somebody who interacts with Kaz I just feel like that would be utterly amazing and ridiculous it would be hilarious <laughs> to see the two of them <laughs> and hopefully they're on some kind of uh short mission together as well yeah exactly like I don't know that we're gonna hear from Poe I feel like the Colossus is gonna be kind of on its own you know it's got like agree- that I- ship on its own feel mm-hmm. like trying to find allies on its own yeah, I would agree with that. Um, maybe at the very end of season two, you know, after the rise of Skywalker, maybe we might get um, some Poe. But yeah, I would I would agree with that, that I don't think I think the classes will be on its own for a little bit and at least maybe trying. And I think um, in the season two trailer, we know that they're going to be struggling for food, struggling for supplies, all of that. So mm-hmm. I think that will probably take up a lot of the um the quests in each of the episodes (laughs) and then of course running from the first order i'm sure they'll be on their tail with the first order i hope we get more um tam parallels tons of tam i want all the time so you know going back and forth where it has hasn't forgotten about her and hopefully she hasn't forgotten about her friends and um that conflict to continue and come to a head would be great you know like they moved back and forth between the first order and the resistance and the pirates and the resistance like and what happened on the colossus a fair amount during season one so i i feel like we're gonna bounce around between the storylines a fair amount Mm -hmm. um i i also think that we might get uh something to do with the children of tahar and maybe ray and (laughs) no like and and like this is kind of like a long shot like i don't know um speculation but we know we're going to get to see kylo ren right and in like almost every property that we've seen we've kind of seen both of them so i think that it would just be really interesting to see like maybe ray takes them on to train them or is like go to this place because we're gonna be like you know gathering the children of the force together or something you know i don't know yeah i just i I feel like that's something that is kind of like a leftover thread that they haven't really touched on oh yeah definitely i mean they brought up that elia the sister that she sees dreams she sees yes her dreams and and they always come true so i don't think yeah like you said i don't think they would bring that all up if it wasn't going to um come to fruition in the second season and then i think there's some shots in the trailer as well where it looks like they're going to some kind of temple um yeah there was that so and then there was like the um the motif on the floor with the snake and then yes. like the temple had um like some interesting imagery within it itself with the like vines and things like that and that was a very forcey temple yeah <laughs> so i think i think we'll definitely see the full some way i didn't think they would go the whole way with ray but i would love that i mean i mean you can't have kylo and not have ray so that i would love i just feel like they chase each other right like that's part of um like the lead up is that like we'll see a property like it's even silly like we'll get like the kylo comic and then the week after we get the ray comic and in spark of resistance we get a lot of conversation about what the supreme leader wants versus ray and like them talking about each other but never actually like interacting Interacting. i think it's just like it would be really interesting to show kind of where they're both at in the show showing kylo ren and specifically showing ray and it would be really cool if we actually got daisy ridley to have voice that voice i know it's uh matt wood that's voicing kylo ren for the show Mm -hmm. and he is Mm -hmm. um supreme leader kylo ren so we know that we're seeing him after the last jedi so it would definitely work to have ray um post the last jedi as well and they're constantly circling each other but never actually interacting (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, and that's like a big theme that they seem to have introduced, especially like in the park itself. Like they're both in Batu at the same time on the same day, and like that day is like repeated over time, right? Like that's the that's like the conceit of Galaxy's Edge, just that they're yeah. both there, and the, um, like literally, like she'll try to like run away as he like shows up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just like there's a lot of fun stuff happening i i i think it's a chance that we might actually see him see her and him in the show maybe not the same episodes but the idea is that they're they're both interested in stuff that's happening with the colossus mm-hmm. i had one more thread that i don't know if they'll pick up on but um it was something from season one and it was with the stormtroopers um the brain scraping mm. um there was one episode in um season one of resistance where um we we actually see another unmasked stormtrooper. Um, right. And um, we find out that at the end of the episode, basically, he's sent to go get his brain scraped. It's awful. I can't believe they included it in kids' show. But he's basically, yeah, getting his brain, you know, wiped and um, going back into for conditioning, which we had, you know, seen mentioned in The Force Awakens with Finn. Um, but the fact that they're doing it, obviously, to all the stormtroopers and that we saw another unmasked stormtrooper, it would just be really cool to get, I mean, we all want a stormtrooper rebellion or something to happen in episode. Yeah. So it'd be cool to have, you know, maybe hints of that or something with the stormtroopers in Resistance. Um, I guess Tam would be the window into that of working Yeah, with- like seeing that happen, like somebody who, uh, you know, or at least... Like, they, they really played up the control over the clone troopers in the Clone Wars, especially in the final seasons. Mm-hmm. And I think it would be interesting to parallel that, especially from a repetitive storytelling perspective. And, like, you know, this time they actually make it out. They they solve that that problem that was introduced in the Clone Wars. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and it also shows um, that it's not just Finn who... Um was rebelling against what had been conditioned into him yeah. right yeah like there's a there's exactly, exactly. A so, problem. so the, the, mm-hmm, exactly so i would love for resistance to pick up on that if it doesn't then i mean i think we still have episode nine but it was brought <laughs> up in resistance so that's why i had it on my list of maybe hopes and wishes that um get brought up and i think we might see a humanizing moment from kylo ren <laughs> <laughs> i mean well so a big theory i think with Raylos is that um the children of tehar um basically the two children that um the he sister let them go? yeah that he let them go um because yep. they say that you know kylo ren destroyed our village and but we were able to escape on the, on the cargo and yeah. we're like yeah i think kylo knew you guys were there <laughs> and he let you go yeah um well and also like um you know, a lot of people bring up that, like, he knows what's in Finn's head. Like, he's a powerful enough force user to have known what was in Finn's head, and he let him go. And on Jakku, yeah. Yeah, on Jakku. And so maybe this is his, like, I don't know, personal rebellion against whatever Snoke had going on with him because we know he had something where he was able to get all of his emotions know exactly what he was doing all the time like making the decision to like it's not worth it to chase these kids it's not worth it to chase this one lone stormtrooper you know that was his tiny bit of rebellion Mm -hmm. in his own situation I I think you know we (laughs) we've gotten humanizing things outside of the cartoons like the snow comic showing kylo and like how abused he is by snoke we know we're gonna get the ben solo as a rolly ball cartoon at some point so showing him as a little kid with his dad as a rolly ball yeah like this is something like they're humanizing him in other properties I really think this, and I said this from the beginning of when I started to cover the resistance last year and just kind of when we would do our check-ins with it, I really think they're going to show that he, again, maybe save the children of Tahar. Like there's, there's something that is, he's not all bad, right? right. <laughs> and I, cause I think that they want to show, even if he's like maybe all bravado or whatever he is do he is in front of his own troops and everything like that he's not all bad you know 
I just I I think that they might want to show the kids that so that things that Ben Demption etc is something that um is something that kids will easily recognize coming when they go to the theater right I agree Mm -hmm. anything else where do you think that it'll lead up to where do you think the season will end okay (laughs) I know I was thinking about it all week I was like because then once we knew the episode count I was like okay so 19 episodes and we're splitting them in half and (laughs) I think maybe they'll make contact with Leia. Maybe something will happen where they make contact with, I just don't think, like you said, I think these first episodes um, that we have left for the the next two months, I don't feel like the Colossus will be communicating with anyone and they'll kind of have to be um, figuring things out on their own. So maybe that it will end with that. I don't, but then I I do want to see Kylo before. So maybe maybe it'll end with Kylo. Halfway point would be Kylo. Like right before... Um, the rise of Skywalker yeah Yeah. so and then like I think this will go all the way up to budding into the rise of Skywalker by that point they can actually talk do a voiceover kind of Dave Filoni style end of Rebels about how things resolved they could totally do that Mm -hmm. right and do that as like the end five minutes of the last episode because that'll come out at the end of January or early February and you know they they might during do at the end those double episodes <laughs> like they yeah, did last yeah. time oh yeah I, I hope they do because that was great i i wish they would get them out like within the same i think because of disney channel programming they have to split it between two weeks but yeah yeah it was a double episode for um the season finale yeah like so we might very well finish right before clone wars comes out i think that they're going to go to batu and and the fleet is meeting on Batu, and that's where the rise of skywalker will start i think they'll they'll butt up to it where they meet up and everybody's kind of there and that will be mm-hmm. like and now we've got to take on this next step and then they'll show kind of the end of the story from the perspective of the resistance characters that we've grown and loved grown up with and loved Yay. <laughs> <laughs> i think that's what we'll see but either way it's like such a good way to almost celebrate this end of the story from a different angle Mm -hmm, definitely (laughs) no it's it's like it's all been building up and leading up to you know episode nine and so this is one you know big part of that um in a way to and um enjoy the last two months oh it's so sad but it's it's one of like i don't know i'm i'm not even worried about the next two months because i know i have resistance it just makes me happy every week (laughs) to get to enjoy the episodes yeah and like in November we're gonna get uh Disney Plus so we're gonna get uh The Mandalorian which I will be covering uh as well as we will be getting Clone Wars and Rebels back yeah <laughs> I've been waiting so long I can't wait to like watch everything all you know yeah and I think that in the end we're gonna see this as a really valuable chapter in telling a different story with characters that we've grown to love that we love what they're showing us and that the themes will be repeated in the prime story i think it's brilliant definitely (laughs) all right hammy do you have anything else to say about resistance other than go and watch it (laughs) no no that's it that's pretty much it it deserves a much bigger audience and don't count it out it it it's funny it's hilarious it's heartwarming it's endearing and it makes you love star wars all over again so <laughs> if yeah, you have it, it you need to watch it and i guarantee you're going to pick up on the same themes and parallels that um marie claire and i have been talking about <laughs> so enjoy yes um well thank you hammy for doing this mini kickoff with me uh it's this is like a bonus episode so i'm just like gonna chuck it out there and have people enjoy <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just whenever i get done editing it's gonna come out so so that'll be awesome. But um, Hammy, thank you for coming on and helping me say this and talk through resistance and kind of process what it all means to me, especially and you and hopefully our listeners enjoyed it as well. Um, where can people find you if they're looking for you out there on the internet? <laughs> Well, first, thank you, Marie Claire, for having me on. I love your show, obviously, <laughs> since I listen to it every week. Um, but also, <laughs> thank you for having me on again. It's and just being a good friend and a good fan. 
<laughs> it's awesome. All everything you do for the fandom, it's so good. Anyways, but yeah, if you would like to follow me, I'm on Twitter at Balance Padawan. Uh, you can come and talk to me about Star Wars as much as you want. And your joy and your memes are just so amazing and <laughs> bring so much joy to me personally. So thank you for everything you do for this fandom. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening to What the Force. I'm Marie Claire Gould, your host. Our music is the What the Force theme orchestral music by Christy Carew. We have a Patreon at patreon.com slash whattheforce. We like to thank all our patrons, especially those who love What the Force, Night Huntress, In Wild Space, Susan, and Cassandra Corvid. We are available on iTunes, Google Play, and other podcatchers, including YouTube. If you would like to support the show in other ways, please leave a five-star review on iTunes. You can connect to us on Twitter at What the Force Show. Feel free to reach out and start a conversation. Cheers. <laughs>